Hey guys, uh, welcome back to my channel. I have another video here. This is going to be a repair diagnosis and let's say circuit board repair too because it's an instrument cluster on this 2003 uh, Homer H2. The customer complaint is uh, his fill gauge doesn't go or well, stays down. <sighs> Let me get the key. I took it off and yeah, it's right here. Sorry for the going back and forth. Thought I have it there. So I know as a step motor, the uh, cluster is not the original. Hopefully you guys can see how the gauge of the field is now calling for like empty. And then it slowly, sometimes it slowly just picks up and uh, it's definitely not working as it should. And now it's slowly because I hit the cluster I checked it out, you know, electrically with a scanner that you can do the swipe on the gauges in a state. So now it's kind of like a slowly coming up to, to life, but it's no good. Uh, this is a very common failure on these clusters, uh, separate motors. So I will be uh, showing the repair for this. Uh, the remove and install of the cluster is pretty easy. You just got to remove the plastic vessel and then get the, the cluster out. Uh, the car, well, as you can see now, the, the gauge went back uh, into empty. Uh, let me see if I can make it go back to uh, life by hitting the gauge. Well, the cluster sometimes works, sometimes it doesn't. Well, believe me, I did a check and uh, that's what we have. Um, so this is what I'm going to check uh, to show. Uh, the car is also here for some other things, but I will not be showing that. It's just a, an oil leak uh, rear crankshaft seal, which is a very hard work to do. I also want to show you guys, this is my new website. You can uh, look for MikeSalazarDiagnostics.com. If you are looking to repair some of the ECMs or PCMs or any module truly that you have for for your vehicles or other shop, clusters, anything, you can contact us here. Um, I put a little bit of a description on what am I doing, what are our services and, you know, cleaning and services alterations. What I'm trying to uh, say about this is if you have a computer that's dead and um, like, you know, how Mercedes and BMW, they said you need to buy a, a brand new module. Um, I can help you with that. As you can see, I also do clusters. I put also some of the pictures of the repairs that I have done through through the time. And you can scroll to those too. And at the bottom of the page, I put also uh, all the links for the videos on repairs, diagnosis, and circuit board repair. I have also a shot in case you need to make some questions. Um, I have at the bottom and a contact form in case you need to, uh, you know, send me pictures in a brief description of what the problem on the board is. Sorry for the glare, guys. Um, this is just a, an indication of where I'm located, not my specific address. It's in Herndon, Virginia. And uh, the subscribe um, bottom form at the bottom as will be you can subscribe right now you can chat with other members as they come active on on the web uh so no, on the website but my goal is to, as soon as i got you know a good amount of uh, subscribers to activate the forum and the blog so we're going to start you know helping each other with this kind of situations and also for the customers to share photos of their repairs or make questions on when it's being done so I can upload uh, also pictures of the process of the repair of forms and etc. So hopefully you guys um, can um, take a look of the, of the website and if you're looking to a repair, just book a repair here. These are the services that I'm offering right now. Sorry to go a little too fast. As you can see, water damage board, that means almost any board that is not working. Also, if you have any other ports, there is not a PCM or an ACM, you can book it in there. I put just an, an hour just to put something in there, but you know, this will be on a one-to-one -one basis depending on the board. I also have uh, an automotive diagnosis video conferencing or conferencing. And this is, uh, I'm using Zoom in here and then you can uh, contact me and I can guide you through anywhere, pretty much in the world that you are. 
uh, definitely this is all based on a fee but i will help you through with the process of you know how to fix your car with any electronic uh, problem that you have and even mechanical sometimes you need to have a guidance on how to test a timing belt or timing change an injector i will uh, help you out with any information that i can provide so just uh give me a uh, you know send me a text or book in here all right guys so this is just again a brief description and i will be showing the process of the repair as we go with this uh instrument cluster i wasn't too happy with that gauge not reading even when i'm bumping to the um see right now it's reading and the monitor fuel goes to 40 percent which is right here and i just hit the the cluster i haven't touched anything else i was just going to show you that i swept the gauge back and forth and it didn't change anything so all you need to do i have the setting it here as you know it has it on and off and right now in all gauges so when i click it on you guys will see right here on the gauges hopefully this is uh so all the gauges went to on and then when i hit off they all all go off i have to actually exit the test for all the gauges to come back but now the fuel gauge is reading again hmm. and all i did was just hit the uh, the dashboard I did a couple of sweeps back and forth and back and forth and back and forth and it worked. But a couple of sweeps uh, and it was also dead, especially after I was showing you in the video. And um, even though I was hitting, that percentage was still on zero. So I'm wondering if we have a, another under layer issue I mean, it can be inside the um, cluster itself. Sorry for the glare, guys, but yeah, sometimes it's pretty much impossible. Yeah, right now it's reading perfectly. Trying to make it go to dead. See, it's now reading like it should. You see how now it's picking up really quick? That's how, you know, a normal gauge should react. Hopefully we catch that on the beginning of this video, how slow it was, but now by me doing the sweep back and forth and back and forth, the sweep on the gauges is actually coming back to life more. See how it's now like almost, almost normal. Trying to get off of the gauge tests yeah i mean without disturbing anything or touching anything the only thing that i have made possible with the testing is the sweep of the gauge itself back and forth and back and forth so whatever was the motor stack is now getting released so yeah this pretty much confirmed my you know suspicious because like I said, I haven't touched anything on the on the tank or either on the gauge. Like you can see everything is, is installed. And this is usually how I test gauges. I mean, you have a problem electrically. I don't care how many times you sweep that gauge that will not change. And as you guys can see now, it's actually like working completely normal. And yeah, all I did, it was going into the gauge test, which I am in right now. Just going to show you quickly. And I'm going to go on and off. On. And you can see the pre are all go really good. And this one is the gauge. It has even the, the uh, temperature for the transmission on the left side. So you got oil pressure, battery, temperature fuel and that is oil uh, temperature for the transmission and then we have all the telltales all the lights seems to be working good too on this cluster so i can go back to on i don't see it getting it stuck right now before it was you know the first test that i did off camera obviously always happens like that 
uh, it was actually very creepy, the, the fuel one, very slow picking up and then releasing. So by uh, moving it, it's actually <clears throat> make it go back to life. And see, look at right now, this wasn't happened before. The temperature, I mean, the, the oil pressure, now that I release the gauges, oh, okay, <laughs> sorry about that. Now, when I release the gauges, as you can see, I went out off the test, the gauge come back almost instantly. And that's just because I'm sweeping back and forth the motor. So yeah, that's what you need to do. You can do a few tests like this on a gauge that is not working. If it moves and it comes back to, you know, like a normal movement like I have right now, I'm going off the test now, uh, not yet. Now, you see how it, it went back to the to the level? That is how a normal gauge should work. So the only thing we're we're touching right now, again, to make it move is a gauge. Nothing, no signals. We're not changing any signals. So the signals are there. Uh, I haven't moved any connection. So it is definitely a stepping motor. All right. So I thought that I was going to show that, but you know, at uh, first when I connect the scanner or when I was doing this and I connect the scanner and it wasn't reading anything, I'm like, mm -mm, it might be something else in there. No, it's not. All right, guys. All right, guys, uh, I'm in the office. Obviously, you guys can see that. All right, so the first thing that I like to do when I get a cluster like this is uh, clean it up a little bit. Uh, use gloves so you don't leave uh, fingerprints. I got this. Uh, I use this for almost everything. It's a Wayman stainless steel clean and polish. I use it for all my um, desk, top. And uh, it gets, you know, all those little dirty spots away. I like to, you know, take all that dust and hair or whatever is on these covers first before I work into it. I will put some pictures of the other work that I'm doing on the car. I already replaced the black covers. Uh, white cover gasket, not the white covers, because uh, they were leaking. And I'm also doing on this same vehicle the rear crankshaft seal. It's uh, it's leaking a lot. And finally, the customer wanted to re you know replace it, so we will be doing that. Oh, I'll be doing that. some opening tools in there and I have a set of plastic ones just in case these are cheap you can get those in Amazon but they got you know nice spatulas that help you open this up gotta be just a little careful when you're trying to open these ones you don't know how brittle they might be so just take your time. I'm looking around for the next ones. Hmm. Yeah, these ones are actually internal. What I mean is they're here on the back. And I'm going to need my glasses for that. Here. Yeah, let's have a, a thin screwdriver. For those, you, know, you got to do is just go from the back here and try to pull the cover apart while you're doing that. I 
I know I'm in the right spot. It's a little hard to say what to see. Just a plastic that is not releasing. It's not going to work. Come on, let it go. Quite a design, huh? Let's see if I can see anything else. No, there's just those two. They're fighting me. I'm trying to put a little pressure so I can get it to open or release. You have to be careful when you stick those up so you don't scratch the face of the dash or a you know instrument panel. It's not letting me go. Let me try this differently. I usually don't remove the rear cover because surely not necessary. But I'm trying to see if, if I can go from there with a, a wider tool. And we can put this here. I leave. Now I can see a lot better that tab. But still, I think it's going to be that easy to get it out. But at least I have now more room to see. And it's, it's almost out. But then, yeah, that's it. Yep, I got it out. So yeah, in this case, just get the back out, and then this will actually work out. Try to like push the plastic this way, and in the, in the same time that you are, you know, prying the tab, and that's it. Reason I like to wear gloves, no fingerprints. Let me put this on the water bench here. Get this a little more organized. Want to see distance of the needles because sometimes they get um, attached and it's because the needle is hitting, but it's not the case. I'm also feeling feeling the stepper motor. Sometimes you can feel a little bit of a like you know like stepping. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Yeah. yeah, they're all bad. No doubt about it. This one is the one I feel the most. When you come back, it's like click, 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 click. And this one too. Hopefully, I'm not, I'm not sure if you guys can see it, but let me try to. No, it's a little bit too big with a finger it's like yeah oof yeah 
This one is a one. The speedometer is a one probably. That is the best of all. But yeah, all these other ones are, are bad. As far as uh, the needle setting, I usually, well, record a video as you saw, and I got the scanner here. So what I like to do is just connect the scanner before I put the face off, on, on again, make sure that they go all the way to the maximum and the minimum, and that's it. Because usually when you set the needles like in zero, let's say, you know, right here, and you connect the ignition or, you know, power onto the cluster, they go back and forth and they usually don't don't exactly match what you're looking for. So it's always better to, to do as I said. The small ones there should be the same. This is 32, so <clears throat> even though I'm wearing a glove, but the dust makes it very easy for any prints on let me replace this glove because that uh, stainless steel material or a spray is a little oily. Let me take the glasses off. I don't need it for what I'm seeing now. Actually, I have a spray bottle here. I use one of my, my perfumes and I fill it with alcohol for this kind of stuff. It has a, a good size spray. And I will remove any marks, oily marks. How are you cleaning? You know, this dash uh, paste, or I keep saying dash, this instrument cluster, it has a like a polish line this way. So just, you know, use the same pattern for cleaning. Wish I can do that on my car. My BMW, the instrument cluster has like dust. I'm not even going to have to. Take it apart one of these days to, to clean it out. All right, I think this is as much as I want to remove from here. We can keep that all together like this. And I'm gonna put it secure here on my bench. And these are the ones, there's our X27-168. I should have some of those in here. Yep. I like always to keep the parts. And I'm going, like I said, to replace them all. So we got seven and Hopefully you guys can see it's the same X27168. Uh, so I'm going to start removing them and then we install the new ones like that. I don't get the, um, the mixed parts. All right, guys, I got coffee, so I'm be right back.
All right, back from the coffee break. I'll do a little inspection on the board, see if it's anything. Yeah, I'm gonna have to resolder some of the resistors. They're very common problematic areas on, on this board, even though that the cluster itself is working good. I can see some little minor issues. Let me see this on the microscope to see if it's just um, the resin from the soldering, whatever they use to put the um, resistors in place. I'll get you guys back in, in the view. Yeah, it looks like somebody did this, but they didn't clean it too well. So I'm going to show you that in a second. Gotta plug the camera. <clears throat> I'm gonna start an OBS. Okay, perfect. Make sure it's in focus. You can see well, so let me focus the view. That looks pretty good. And let's just start the recording, which is now. All right, so hopefully, well, now hopefully I know that you guys will be able to see that really good, so Whoever worked on this board before didn't do a very clean job. So the paste that they use is actually creating, you know, corrosion. And that's why you need to clean uh, very well your, your flux or flux, yeah, flux. The actual soldering doesn't look that bad. <clears throat> I'm going to clean it up. To see, I mean, look at this. Look at that Q tip. Because with all this in there, it's going to be very hard for me to see. Really dirty. And let me get my gloves back on. <laughs> I'm probably just gonna show a little bit so I don't make the video too extra long. Maybe I want the motor replacement. And let me look a little more here before I condemn the, the soldering. Cause it's just dirty. It's not the actual soldering joints. They don't look that bad. Whoever did this didn't took the time to really clean the board well. I 
again it's nothing outrageous but if you're so this was supposed to be replaced or it was replaced by the customer before so in order for me to get a good assess, you know, assessment of what it needs to be repaired or not, I need to clean it. I look like all these ones, they got retouched. So this is a remanufactured um, cluster, most likely, or refurbished. Okay, now let's get a little closer. I have to put my eyepieces in focus. Have that on the camera, really good too. Yeah, all these Saturnines are, are okay. No problems with it. Just dirty, dirty work. I saw some here. These were never touched. Even as you can see here, the original ones, they leave a little bit of a, the sadder um, resin in it. The actual Soldering is perfect. So no problems in here. You see, that's the only way you can really see. Hopefully, you guys can see how quickly this uh, chemical dries up. Again, for ones that, for those who want to know, it's from MG chemi uh, Chemicals Flux Remover for PC board, so it's completely safe to use on all this. So let me go around a little bit more. With you guys here, I can get a little far so we get a, a wider view of the entire board. If I see something suspicious, then I will get close. Let's see this, this one here. Which they usually don't, don't become loose, the one next to the LEDs. But it looks a little strange. Maybe just that uh, leftover of the resin. Yep, nothing wrong with it. You can see, you know, I had another video. I will probably put the link on on here so you guys can see the when um, actual resistor is cracked Let me get a little better adjustment on the video yeah around there Yeah, it's just the leftover. No, it's set up perfectly. Yeah, all the LEDs and all the walls and, and the cluster were replaced. So 
And I check all the lights and they're all good. All the warning lights and everything is perfect. And these ones right here, they're the ones that are always given an issue and they did it all. Look at this right here. See, this is where they work. <laughs> and as you can see, it's a mess. I ain't going to leave that. I mean, that is disgusting. I'm sorry, but whoever did this, you did a good job. But cleaning, no. And this will eventually corrode the pads and give issues. Ah, did I throw that Q-tip? I guess they have a budget to work with and as long as the cluster works they don't take too much time on cleaning. I think uh, everybody's money is well earned so I do take my time. I ch uh, charge a labor for a good repair and I'm going to recheck everything. Make sure the customer is not going to have any issues after. Because now, from now on, it's going to be on my on my side. I don't care who did it before before me. My capacitor looks a little weird, but no, it's the same thing. It's just that same. material and I don't think they did this ones and I mean something like this is normal I mean it's like a, a varnish that will not really give so much of a problem but what they left in there that was not a little bit that was a huge amount yeah, as you can see those solder joints are perfect, no problem. So it seems like the board itself is blowing some air to let it dry it up a little more. And I find that good tip. <laughs> Something attached to my pen. I use a re enter wall. Um, goo. I don't even know how to call that from Etilek, I think is the name of the company. And it's very uh, sticky. Now let's get back to. A little farther. Capacitor look good. Yeah, I mean, realistically, the board is in really, really good shape. It's amazing that those are step motor fail, but I mean, yeah, you can get Chinese copies that they're not going to last, they're really cheap, but they, that's, that's what they're cheap. Yeah, no, there is absolutely nothing wrong with this. It's going fast. There's a prom right there. Now we'll clean those as well. Yeah, it looks like it's nothing I can do with that.
Use this in a stained glass. Yeah, it's not dirty, it's just stained, but you will not see that when you turn it on. <clears throat> you want to see those, um, that mark we have right now on the screen from those, uh, how can I call that? Uh, you know, where the information um, screens are for the Prindle and for this, this to this place, you want to see that black spot that is actually good. It means it's sealed. If it, that is not there, it's cracked, replace. You need to replace it. All right, now everything looks good. So we can actually remove the stepper motor. tools in here is this as a I don't like to put the whole weight on the noodles even though I'm going to replace it but let's see yeah look like, like they put a like a clear coat and most of the motors like this one they did not on this one, not on this one, half of this one, not on this one, and half of this one. So it's just like a varnish. I'm going to have to change the height, most likely. Let's see. Yeah. Yeah, that's perfect. <clears throat> yes, soft. When the board is brand new, there's no doubt about it. Everything looks really good. There is no hot spots or anything as far as, uh, You know, like when you have a problems with uh, a bad soldering and the started in the, the pads or a bad capacitor. This is the one uh, we have the issue, which is uh, the fuel gauge. Just removing as much as I can from that. Otherwise, I will get attached to my wicks and I will clean it and I will remove easy. This one, I'm not going to use a soldering soccer. It's just, I think it's much easier to do with the wicks. And again, I mean, uh, a motor can fail at any time. Even originals, they fail. So let me put the microscope in a better position. Yep, that's better. And I'm just trying to get that uh, clear coat away as much as possible from there. Okay. Turn that on. bit of a headache.
you can see the wix just works it's phenomenal for this gotta cut it that's what you need to do you know use it and then cut the piece that is already filled with the solder and we can come back in here If I can push it, Oops. Mm -hmm. work out really good. Sometimes I just go around like this and and it gets it off like this. You have to cut it every single time. Sometimes you're able to move it around. Hopefully you guys saw that. It's just perfect. Sucked it in really, really nice. And now we can probably pull this out and yeah, bend the points of that uh, step motor. Uh, this one is still attached here. This one is loose. This one is loose. I'm just touching it with a iron. And it's loose now. We're just barely grabbing it. You know, I'm bending more a little bit. That should be it. Mm -hmm. And we got it out. I'm going to show you one second before we go how that looks. So you will not miss uh, position. You have this plastic uh, position or pin that will position the motor in just one spot in this one. So that's it. You cannot reverse it. So don't worry about that. And that's how they look. That's the part number. So let me get a new one in here. <clears throat> let me clean this a little. These cans are very handy. These dusters just compress air, so it works really good for these things. I gotta beat this, and sometimes it's not big enough. All right, so. Mm hmm, we're exactly the same one. to the center I mean focus that it's not a focus I can see good We got two. Let me move the camera as you guys can see. I'm 
and that's a perfect solder. And that's how you replace the motors. Just a little bit of uh, what was around the same thing, but we have one installed, so to not make the video too long, I'm going to replace all the step motors and then assemble the, the cluster, which is just put it back, I mean, sorry guys, put it back together, and I'm going to test it on here with the scanner, so you guys can see also that, all right? All right, guys, I got the cluster pretty much uh, ready to go. I have just put the, you know, all the needles in place. As I first putting the needles in place, what I usually do, I just don't push it all the way in. I go here, and then when I feel that it's a stopping, I leave it there like this ones. I can feel that is the minimum, 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 and minimum. So they're all in zero. That doesn't mean they're in zero. So that's why we need to do this test. You can do this in the car if you don't have a way to do what I'm doing, but uh, that's the way I do it. So I don't want to, because sometimes uh, the customer is not in the same state. You have to ship the cluster. So I, I had to make sure it's calibrated. All right, so the other thing that I want to show just briefly quick in here is this is the wire diagram. Um, it's pretty simple. All you need in here is the powers, which are uh, a, uh, let me see, I think it's uh, B11, B9, and A11. Then we have grounds in A12 and B12. And then the communication is an A6, which is a gray wire. And that's just the OEM callers. That's all you really need to, to do this, what I'm doing. So um, I have on the back, so you guys can see, that's the OEM connector. And what I did is I solder just the, the wires that I need to an OVD2 connector. And I have my scanner or my scan module from the Snap-on. I'm using the Snap-on uh, uh, SUS for this. So uh, another thing that is important, make sure that you give yourself enough amperage. These clusters, they usually run a little over one amp, especially these aftermarkets. And you're gonna have this kind of uh, module connected too. So I'd rather use like two amps to make sure that we have no, no lack of power. So I'm going to turn the uh, power supply on. As you can see, the cluster come comes to life, which is perfect. And I have to wait for the scanner module. Now it's communicating. So I'm going to, um, since I did this card on the shop, I can activate it, even though it's not gonna read the computer, it's gonna tell me there's no communication, but it's going to help me out to, to get to the instrument cluster. I can do a, um, screen recording, but I think for this, you say it doesn't suppose, uh, support automatic ID, which it does, if you would have been connected in the car. But this way, I can just go into the instrument cluster, and yes, we are here. All I need here is the test that I show at the beginning of the video, which is the SWIP test. So I'm going to do that, and now you can see that all the gauges are completely off. So I'm going on, we should go all the way to maximum. We can see the RPMs are off and some of the other ones are off So and then off. And then here, when you set it off, and that's what I like to uh, do it manually, is since they're not pushed all the way in, I can just come and softly, I mean, this is a little push in more than what I want, but that's perfect. Perfect. This one is kind of like, okay, that one is fine. And that one is fine. Hopefully you guys are seeing that in the RPM. I mean, the, oh, if that happens, yes, since it's not push all the way in, I can go back. Yep, that looks a lot better. And now let's do another on. And now we can see it's in the maximum. This one's a little over, but 
so is the gauge. Let's switch it off again. So we can go a little, oops, now too much. Yes. And that's why you know, push, don't push the needle all the way in like that. I can come back and the fuel oh, needs to go. I'm doing the, thing, the same thing with the fuel. Let's go on. That look good. Transmission temperature is fine. It looks like the RPM is just like that. The speedometer is perfect. Oil pressure is good. Fuel gauge is okay. And battery and so is auto one. So let's turn it off. I think this one has to come down like right there. Yeah. All right, that looks pretty good. Let me go and see the battery again one more time. Off and on. As you can see, look at the battery. It's just in between the red line. So each gauge is a little different. So off. See, it's just on the top of the nine and then on just on top of the 19. So that's perfect. All right, perfect. So what I was going to say, um, all you need to do is just make sure that you push the needle. Oh, and I forgot to show you this too. I have this base from Quad Hands, fully recommended. Uh, I bought it from Amazon. It's like 10 pounds and it has this nice arms. They can hold pretty much anything. It has actually six arms, like long, uh, long medium and short that helped me to hold the PCMs, boards and clusters. So I don't have to be worried about cables, you know, being shorted or anything. And uh, it's very, very helpful for this. So like, again, what you need to do, I like to do this off. So let me exit the scanner. Perfect. And turn this off. Because now I can disconnect this from here and then push the needles down. Perfect. And I want to do another uh, last sweep test. And you should do that also if you're working on this. Just to make sure that nothing uh, change. See, the RPM looks a little offset, but we'll see when we connect the scanner. So is this one and this one. We need to go off and on because I touch it. So that, that might change it. So, all right. So, uh, vehicle history. I'm just going on the scanner. You guys will not be probably able to see what I'm doing. I'm not sure if the angle shows. Scanner. And then instrument cluster, functional tests, all gauges, and then on. Yeah, this one looks off a lot. You see? So they did move. I hope I can adjust this here. So on. Looks like the rest are fine. This one just a little tiny bit. And sometimes the step motor jumps. That's why you need to do that with the needles as possible loose, but not too loose because they move. When you push it in, they move. All right, that all look good was just a minor adjustment so I'm going to 
turn it back off. So I have to, that's just a test. So let's turn this off. One more time on. See this one is not going and this one is not going into the spot. So we still have to the uh, needles that are giving me the issue. So I'm gonna have to, yeah, I can feel it in there. Right, let me turn it off one more second. It should have, okay. It's, this one is perfect now. This one is not yet, so. I can feel, you know, it's the step motor in there, the stepper motor. Perfect. Nine. Mm -hmm. Let's go now to all gauges. It's attempting communication since I went on and off. Most likely going to have to come out with the scanner and do it again. Yeah, that gives me an error and no one is uh, snap on. I have to exit the vehicle. Um, vehicle history, act activate. When you, whenever you have that problem with a snap on, I give you that exit and all those errors in there, yes. Don't even keep trying. Just exit and and re and and reread the vehicle because it's usually when you turn the ignition on and off and you're still were like in a you know in in a menu like this. I know for experience. All right, so let's go to on. All right, good. Perfect. 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 Off. This is a little tiny bit off, like right there. On it's exactly 120. Yes, this niche. Oof, too much. Yeah, I can see here. But that's what I go from on to off is the needle. Oh, uh, come on. Yeah, that's perfect. Yeah, that is perfect, even though I have to come out every time. So this is just a process, guys. So one more time, turn it off. Turn it back on. Wait for the needles to adjust to the minimum, and they're all looking at zero perfect. The gas uh, is the one that has to be below, you know, for the reserve. <laughs> How I forgot that word. Oh, man. It's funny, but sometimes, you know, your brain is... I don't know if it has happened to you guys, but it happens to me uh, many different times that I go and try to say a word and I just can't remember it. And I had it like in the tip of the tongue. Uh, so let's do it one more time. Scanner. I like to show this. I know it's uh, probably a video is going to be like an hour long or so, but I mean, uh, you guys want to learn how to do this? This is this is how it's done. Okay, so as far as power on and on, now all the gauges look good. Maximum, they look perfect. And minimum, they look perfect. So I don't need the scanner no more. I can exit here. First time since this is so quiet here in the office that I noticed that this scanner module from Snap and it actually makes a noise and it produces a red light when you turn it off. <laughs> I'm sorry. Let me shut the scanner down because it's in battery. Just to save the battery, I can turn this off. I'm going to disconnect the scanner module. I don't need that. And I'm going to turn this just the cluster on one more time. Perfect. Perfecto. All right, guys. So this is it. Everything is done in this cluster. I uh, hope you guys like the content. Don't forget to subscribe. And um, 
I'm about to reach the 10,000 um, subscribers. So I will be doing the giveaway tool uh, probably even tomorrow as soon as I reach the 10,000, which was my promise. And I have the tool ready here. So for those that haven't subscribed or put a comment, not, you, you don't really need to subscribe, but I mean, it would be nice if you do. If you go over to the video where I promote the giveaway, this is a, a Fluke a Visual R, uh, Infrared Thermometer. Very, very nice tool. It's uh, from Fluke, so hopefully it will be tonight and I do the video for the giveaway tomorrow. So I'll see you next time. Don't forget to subscribe and thanks a lot. Bye-bye.